We have just finished the straw bell building workshop. It's only seven days workshop. And then we have about 20 participants. And then actually it takes seven days because of there are so many people come to do together. And we spend a lot of time on learning. But normally to do this kind of building, we don't need a lot of people. Three to five people is the best number. If you make the process of building very fast and very quick. And then this kind of building is very cheap and easy. Anybody can do this building. So straw bell is the easiest, fastest way of building a house. When we already have the plan or the design for the house, the next thing we have to do is to make the floor. The floor has to be concrete floor and this is a rough floor. The height of the floor, the thickness of the floor is about three to four inches. This is the rough one, not the finished one. And then after that, we have to draw the line where the wall is going to be. And then we're going to make the frame to floor the foundation above the floor because normal straw bell house we always have problem with termites so to make the foundation above the ground is very important because it can prevent termites and water very well what we use to make the frame for the foundation is the concrete blocks because the foundation, we need it to be 8 inches height. And then the, the width of the foundation is about uh, 50 centimeters or half a meter. That's the size of the straw bell. Use concrete block is very easy and convenient because the height of the concrete block is, is the same size with the height that we want. And then we don't need to take it off because when we pour the concrete in there, the concrete box is going to stay there. And then we just plus the outside of it. It will be very smooth and nice after that. So concrete block is quite cheap and easy to use. If we have to fill up with cement the whole thing, it will cost more money and use more cement. Instead of just cement the whole thing, we add sand in there. So sand is going to help to decrease the expense. And sand is easier to work with. We fill up with sand almost full. We leave the space about 3 inches. That's the side of the cement that we need to put in. It's not a lot of cement. The good thing of sand is sand is not shrink and not expand when it's wet and it's dry. It's different from clay. If we use clay, when it's wet, it expands a lot. But when it's dry, it shrink a lot. But sand is stable. It's the same shape all the time. So that's a good thing. So we use sand instead of soil or clay. The mixture of the cement that I use is one part of cement, three part of sand, and three part of rocks or gravels. So this is the normal recipe that we use for foundation or the floor. The cement that we use is uh, Portland cement, normal Portland cement. If we don't have cement in some area that you cannot find the cement easily. You can use lime to press cement. It's also okay. There are many ways to mix cement normally, but the way that we use is we mix one three part of sand, one part of cement. Mix cement and sand together very well first, and then we can make the volcano like make a pit in the middle and fill up with water. We just estimate roughly not too much water. Uh, 
maybe just to fill up the pit that's enough it depends on the sand if the sand is very wet we use less uh, water and then we soak it let it soak there until the cement and sand absorb water completely and we start to mix it after that so if we mix it immediately after we add water it will be very hard to mix but if we let it soak for five minutes or ten minutes and then we mix it later after that it will be a lot easier after the sand and cement absorb water very well we start to mix together after that it will be easier to mix and when we mix together very well it will be very loose and it's easy to work, easy to mix. And then we add gravel or rocks in there. So we always add rock at the end. It will be easier to mix. After the cement was mixed well, we just put in the bucket and bring it to pour on top of the sand that we level already. So we use not very thick cement on the sand. It's maybe about uh, two to three inches that's the most we can do and then before the cement dry we need to cut a plastic the same side with the foundation is like uh, about 50 centimeters the width and put on top of the cement before it dry because this plastic will be the protection of the straw straw bell because this plastic will prevent the moisture from the ground to come up to the straw bell and then we put the bamboo stick that we chop the both ends of the stick and then we just stick in the plastic so this stick it will be about one foot far apart this stick will be stay in the cement forever and then the sharp part will stick up and then when we put the straw on top of it we just push the straw bell on top of the stick so the stick will hold the straw bell very well after that this bamboo stick can be about two feet long because one part of it can be in the cement and one part of it can use to hold the straw bell. We have to do like this all the way around. Wherever there's a foundation, we need to have plastic and put the stick in there like this. And then wet until it dry. It maybe take uh, a few hours for the cement to be completely hard. When it's hard enough, we don't need to wait too long like a normal building because the straw bell is quite light to put on top of it. It will not make the cement crack or break the cement at all. So when the cement is hard enough, we just bring the straw bell and then push the bell into the sharp bamboo that stick up on the foundation just push it before we push it we need to make sure it's straight and then push the bell in there if it's not straight pull it up and then push it back again to make it straight completely because if it's not straight you cannot fix it anymore after we go to the second layer so the first layer we need to make sure that it's completely straight because normally we don't pull the line to make it straight we just look it by eyeball normally it will be easier and better if we have one or one people stand on the end of the corner and then that person will help to look at it to tell us it's straight or not straight because that person who stand on the edge of the wall you can see it quite clear where it's go where the 
straw bell turn to. So we just keep pushing in, pushing in like this. The first layer, it maybe take a little bit of time to make sure it's straight. But the second layer will be a lot easier after that. When we come to the corner, sometimes it creates a big gap between the corner. So in this way, we can add more straw in there. We just cut the string from the another bell and take the straw to fill up there. To fill up this gap, we need to make sure that we push it very tight, as tight as we can, and then make it as straight as we, as we can. So when we plaster, it will be easier after that. So because both sides is tight already, we can add straw as tight as we can easily too. How to cut the bells to fill up the gap? Sometimes we have a big gap. It's good to cut the bell in half or any side that we want. What we need is the needle. We use bamboo, sharp one end and make a hole in another end. It will be like a needle. And then we can use the string that they tie the bell, put in the hole, and then we can push the needle to the, the bell and then tie it both sides. It can be four string to tie it and then we can cut the two string that they have in the bell already. And after that, we can pull it up. It will be two bells after that. We can split it easily in this way. During this process, we need to make sure that each string that we sew it in will not tie each other. Because sometimes when it ties each other, we need to redo it again. And every time when we cut the string on the bell, it's good to cut at the knot. So we can use the string again easily. Because if we cut with the knot in the middle of the string, it's very hard to pull it through the bell. So be aware that whenever we cut the bell, we cut the string on the bell. We need to cut at the knot only. When we tie the string, it's good to make sure that it's very, very tight, if it's not loose. So if we tie it tight, it will keep the tightness of the straw bell very well. After we finish the first layer of the bell, laying the bell, the first layer, the second layer, each bell have to be interlocked. Each bell that we put have to be above two bells at the bottom, always like that. And then when we put the bell all the way to the wall, and then we can check the straight of the wall, and then we can adjust it make it straight as we can and then after we make sure that it's totally straight we can nail the bamboo to lock this bell on the second layer to the first layer so we need to prepare quite a lot of a bamboo stick every bell we need two of them we keep building like this it will go very fast in one day you can finish the whole building easily and wherever it's going to be door or window we put the lentil on top of it lentil can be any wood or metal to put on top and then we put the bell on top of it and then we can put the frame later on when we build up to the height that we want to, 
The next thing is to make the roof structure. The roof of the straw bale house, normally we just uh, put the beam on top of the wall and build up the roof on top of the wall directly. So just imagine easily like we make the roof structure from outside and we move it up to put on the wall. That's all. So it's very simple and easy. The roof of this building, the original idea, we want to make a living roof. L living roof means we can grow vegetable or have a garden on top of the roof. Because the straw bell is strong, very strong, it can hold living roof easily. But later on, we change our mind. We want to make the floor for the second floor so we can use more space for living. So now we're going to make the floor instead of the roof for this building. When we finish the structure for the roof or the floor, the next thing we need to do is we need to tie the beam that rests on the wall to the wall. Normally we use the PVC pipe, like a uh, small PVC pipe, and cut it the same size with the bell. And we can push this pipe under the bell and then we can put the string through the pipe and then we can tie this string to tie the beam to the wall and then it will hold the wall it will hold the beam connect to the wall very strong after that this is the string that we tie the wall with the beam on top of the roof. And then after that, we can plaster over the string. We can see the string after that. So this string holds the beam very well. The way we tie the string to make it very tight, normally we just make a loop first and then we put the string in there and pull it very tight sometimes we need maybe two or three people to help to pull it down like this and then it will be very very tight after that we can tie it very well after that it will not move at all we can leave it like this and then we just plaster over the string you can't see the string anymore and then the string will be whole the roof structure with the wall it's very strong after that how to plaster the straw bell is uh, not easy like uh, when we plaster with adobe bricks because it's not very it's not easy for the mud to stick on the wall so the first thing we need to use the very thin mud like make it very liquidy and then smear it on the wall first it can be a very thin layer don't need to do a lot and then just smear it in there to make it wet with mud and then after that you can go the second round with the normal plaster after that and then you can make it as thick as you want after that so remember that the the mud will not stick to the straw very easy. We need to smear the very wet one first. When we plaster very thick, anywhere is very deep hole. We need to mix a lot of straw in the mud and then add it in, add it in more and more. So if we add enough straw in the plaster, it will not crack. It helps a lot and then when it dry it will be very nice after that so when we build it's always have somewhere it's very deep hole always add more straw in the mud first before we put on the wall 
to plaster the second layer it can be thick somewhere it can be thick somewhere it can be thin it's okay but if somewhere it's very deep hole it's better to add a lot of mud in the hole and then add a lot of straw with, with, mixed with mud to cover the top part of it and then it will not crack and then it will be very strong after that so to plaster the straw bell it not too bad even it's harder than plaster the adobe bricks but it's not too bad we can go very fast if we mix with uh, a lot of straw in there it'll be easier so try to find the easiest technique don't try to attach to any theory just remember that if it's hard it's wrong between the frame and the wall it can have a gap there so after we've set up with the door frame or the window frame we can mix straw with mud and add it in to fill up the whole thing and then you can show the frame as much as you want so when you add it enough mud and straw when it dry it will make the frame very strong it can hold the frame very well when we plaster it's good to make it smooth as we as smooth as we can because after that we will wet until it totally dry when it dry we can paint on it so when we paint it will save a lot of paint if it's very smooth if the surface is very rough we use more paint than normal when we do plastering we can always do some artwork after that so we can sculpture anything on the wall it's okay even if you want to make it like a rock like anything else you can do whatever so you can do whatever you can do any artwork on the wall after that it will be very fun for people if we want to make a living roof this is finished we just add more dirt and compost on top of the roof and we can plant anything we can make the garden on top of the roof that's all but when we change our mind we can make the in the roof into the second floor so people can sleep up there and then this is the building after we finish the paint you can see more detail about clay paint in another video clip so we can understand more about how to make clay so i don't want to make this clip too long so you can see more in the clay paint this is the finish inside we make this building to make a shop a coffee shop and the products so we build this building from the workshop it takes two days to finish the whole thing but if we have only three or four people it will be a lot faster than this this because of we have workshop so we need to spend a lot of time to talk to explain to people and then when we have more people we need to manage people more but the good amount of earthen building is five three to five people that is the best number of people